Anthony Lowenstein, he is an investigative journalist and the author of the book My Israel Question. Anthony, thanks very much indeed for joining us. You. Uh, what's your reading of the situation uh, then? We've been here before, of course, where ceasefire talks appeared that there might be a breakthrough imminently and they have fallen through. Do you feel more confident this time around? Well, what's happened in the last week or two is a bit of a shift in Israeli public opinion, who for months and months have supported the war to continue. The latest poll I saw last week suggested that now a small majority would want the hostages to come home, even if the war had to end to make that happen. Now, Netanyahu could ignore that. He's ignored many things in the past. And as your correspondent just said, his far-right coalition is demanding that the Rafa offensive happen. If it does not, the government will collapse. So... Look, beyond the idea of a permanent ceasefire, obviously a cessation of hostilities is a good thing. The release of some hostages is a good thing. But the idea that the war could potentially restart at the end of it, I mean, Netanyahu is really in a, in a bind because the majority of Israelis do not support him now anymore. If there was an election held tomorrow, he would almost certainly lose. And the war aims that he himself and his government stated six or so months ago have been not achieved at all. So I think there's a real hope, obviously, and pressure both on Israel and, frankly, also Hamas to have some kind of truce of sorts. But whether this is going to get across the line or Israel is much keen to, in fact, go into Rafa, because finally, Netanyahu does not want the war to end. And that means endless war, because if you end the war, People are going to start asking far more questions about October 7, what went wrong, who was responsible and who was Prime Minister Netanyahu. Uh, do you feel that those contradictory pressures then on Benjamin Netanyahu are, are the sole factor behind the ongoing war and the fact that it's lasted more than six months? I think there's a few factors. I mean, his government obviously is, is a major issue here that um, his coalition wants the war to continue regardless. I think the Israeli public, as I said, pretty much until recently, still wanted the war to go on, that there is a real bloodlust within the Israeli public towards pummeling and destroying all of Gaza. I'm not just talking about going after Hamas. I'm talking about trying to obliterate Gaza. And it is so, to say it's short-term thinking would be an understatement. I mean, the idea that you would destroy as a state your neighbour, Gaza, and therefore in the deluded belief that that would bring you more safety, it's in fact the opposite, that Israel's position strategically, let alone morally, globally, has collapsed. And you're not going to recover that arguably ever, but certainly not in the foreseeable future. So Israel's position, whenever this ends, tomorrow, next week, in a month, is going to be far worse than it was on October the 6th. And I think a lot of Israelis, at least the smart ones, will recognise that. And Anthony Blinken's on this shuttle diplomacy tour of the Middle East, yet another one. Um, ceasefire, of course, and humanitarian aid into Gaza are the priorities. But we know he's also talking to Arab leaders about what comes after in Gaza, a post-war plan. And he'll be meeting the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, to discuss that, but given Mahmoud Abbas's standing amongst many Palestinians, how much of a stumbling block is the US insistence that the PA have some sort of role in Gaza beyond the war? I mean, ultimately, the US plan is devoid of any kind of reality. I mean, there's no real constituency within Palestine, or I would argue much of the Arab world. The Arab elites, yes. But the Arab populations have for years said that they treat Mahmoud Abbas with the contempt he deserves, a deeply old, corrupt man who has no legitimacy within his own people, within the West Bank, let alone anywhere else. And of course, what Blinken's also trying to do yet again is to push this so-called normalization deal between Israel and Saudi. This again, utterly delusional belief that somehow if Israel and Saudi become closer friends, that'll somehow bring peace to Palestine. It won't. I mean, the normalization deals in the last five or so years when Trump was president between Israel and some of the Gulf states has done nothing for Palestinians. It's certainly allowed, as my book, the Palestine Laboratory explains, has allowed huge amounts of repressive technology to be sold from Israel to those Gulf states, but it's done nothing for Palestinians. And any kind of normalization deal between Saudi and Israel will also achieve nothing for Palestinians. I mean, the rebuilding of Gaza should be done by Israel. Why should Arab states who, although they were arguably far too acquiescent in the current war, be rebuilding? Israel destroyed Gaza. They should rebuild it. But frankly, I don't think they will. 
Uh, Anthony, we thank you as always for your time. Much appreciated. Anthony Lowenstein there thank you so uh, much. joining us, the author of The Palestine Laboratory.